Noah didn't understand my adoration for literature. In books, I experienced adventure, love, and mystery. I could transport myself from an empty house to the big city or a different century. My father once told me that books have the power to heal. I cracked the door and peered inside the spare bedroom. My stomach flip-flopped all the way to South America when I saw the numerous boxes stacked to the ceiling. The room smelled like cardboard, old paper, and the musk of three sweaty delivery men. In order to access the room, I'd have to pull everything out. Maybe he won't notice. Noah was a workaholic, and when he came home, he wanted to relax. While we weren't mated, we'd been together for two years. This past year, we quickly exited the honeymoon phase of the relationship after moving to a small breed town called Storybook. Noah's long commutes and work hours had taken their toll on both of us. He was under an incredible amount of stress. Most nights, he would come home, jump in the shower, and go straight to bed. Otherwise, he would get on his laptop to check in with contacts in search of a better-paying job. Having moved here only six months ago, we hadn't accumulated a lot of possessions. Money was tight. We used the spare bedroom for storage, so I'd had to clear it out for today's delivery. I hadn't expected so many boxes. Not that I was complaining. Surrounded by my father's books was the next best thing to him being alive. I waltzed into our bedroom and retrieved a red tablecloth from the closet. The delivery guys had left the three extra boxes by the spare bedroom, and I didn't want them to draw Noah's attention before I broke the news. After draping the tablecloth over the boxes, I used a vase, two books, and my jar of suckers to decorate the top so it resembled a makeshift table. Without legs. Think positive thoughts. He'll be happy when he learns how much money we can make from these. A car squealed in the driveway. What's he doing home so early? I panicked when I spied dirt on the floor that the delivery men had tracked in. I raced into the kitchen, found a dish towel, and ran it beneath the faucet. Then I diligently cleaned up every speck. Noah stomped up the porch steps. As soon as the door opened, I flung the rag into the sink and pivoted. One row of cabinets ran along the front wall of the house, placing the fridge near the door. Stepping inside, Noah still had on his black sunglasses. He scanned the room until he caught me. Hey, baby, I missed you all day. He kicked the door shut behind him and tossed his keys into a glass bowl on the table by his chair. Noah sometimes tied back his long brown hair, but not today. The tousled lock suggested he'd been driving with the window down again. He shucked off his sport coat and draped it over the recliner before stripping off his heather gray t-shirt. Noah did push-ups, but he wasn't a buff guy. He still looked impressive at 6'2", and what he lacked in muscle he made up for in confidence. 